Welcome back. Today we are going to show you how to do brakes on a 2020 Mercedes Sprinter. Our van has about 40,000 miles on it and they're getting somewhat low. They've still got a little bit of life left, but we are planning to make a very long road trip. So we want to get this stuff done before we set out on that. I already did the front and the rear on the driver's side, so I actually know what I'm doing. Uh, so I can explain it to you guys and I'll show you a few spots where I had issues along the way so maybe you don't um, you know fall into the same pitfalls that I did. We've got PowerStop Z36 pads and we've got uh, PowerStop Geomet coated rotors. I've had really good luck with PowerStop stuff in the past on different vehicles. I haven't put brakes on this before um, but these rotors are they are vented, but they are not slotted or cross-drilled uh, because I don't think that this is a good application for a slotted or cross-drilled rotor. These pads are carbon fiber ceramic, which should help to reduce some noise because these brakes in the rear squeal, which is apparently like a thing that sprinters do. So I'm going to be greasing everything, uh, not the faces of the rotors or the pads though. Um, and hopefully that stops the squeal. Before you get started on disassembling the rear brakes, if you've got an electric parking brake, you need to set the parking brake to the service position. So here's how you do that. You first need to park the van, see we're in P, and you need to turn the parking brake off, which it's off right now. In order to access the workshop menu, you have to go to the total mileage display and then hold the back button for two seconds and then press the trackpad. And then this menu will pop up and you want to go to brake pad replacement to move to fitting position, okay. So you push the trackpad and it will say moving to fitting position. And then you wait until it says fitting position reached and now you can go to work. So we've got the vans jacked up. The axle is on a jack stand for safety, obviously. And we've got the wheel off, which uh, I skipped over, I guess, because I'm assuming if, you know, if you're doing your own brakes, you know how to remove the wheel at least. Other than the parking brake setting procedure, which we already showed you, the rest of this brake job is really pretty straightforward. It's pretty much the same as any other car. In general, we're going to remove the caliper from the carrier, then we're going to remove the carrier, we'll remove the rotor and the pads from the caliper, and then reassemble everything. It's pretty much the same process as anything else, but we'll show you where the bolts are that you need to take out and which tools you need to do it. One thing that I'm not gonna be able to show on this side is how to remove the wear indicator because I thought that it was on both sides, but it turns out that that piece is only on the driver's side rear brake pad. Um, but I wouldn't have done a good job at showing you how to remove it anyways because I broke hours when I did it. Um, but I super glued it back together and so far it seems to be working okay. Uh, what I tried was gently prying it out this way with a screwdriver in between the gap between the pad and the sensor. Uh, but like I said, it cracked the plastic. I think knowing what I know now, I would have tried to pry more gently and from both sides, you know, back and forth and maybe it would come out. The first thing that I'm going to do is to unplug the parking brake motor. There's two little tabs here. You just need to pull out slightly and push this sleeve down and that gives you access to the locking tab, which you can squeeze and then lift the whole connector up. There's a little Christmas tree retainer here, which I'm just gonna pry out. We've got this rubber cap here and one down here, and these give you access to the caliper bolts. The caliper bolts are a six millimeter Allen head. It's very toy. So now 
we got to take out the rotor retainer screw. This is a T30 Torx. So there's this little piece of the carrier bolt thing and this rubber boot sort of pushes it into the carrier. Uh, but you just got to pry it back a little bit. It just sits into like a, a very small pocket there But if you don't lift it out, you won't be able to pry the caliper away and the bottom one uh, Is not doing that but the screw sort of kind of does that effect so Just pry it back And get it to sit inside the boot like that and now The caliper will pry out pretty easily There goes that bolt. Yeah, you don't need it. You can zip tie the caliper up out of the way. I usually just kind of like find a good spot where it wants to hang out, but you don't want to let it hang by the hydraulic hose because that's not really what hydraulic hose is for. So now you've got a much better view of our pads and you can see that they're not evenly worn at all, which was also the case on the driver's side. I'm not sure why that is, but it seems like the caliper is getting hung up uh, some way or another. Although the the slide bolts are pretty well greased, so I'm not really sure what that's about. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to make a note that I noticed after I said that, that one of the slide pin bolts on both sides of the rear was really not well greased, so I went back later and I applied grease to all four of the carrier bolts after the fact. So uh, it's something that I would probably recommend to do while you're in there, because I had to take the whole van apart to do it uh, again. But something to be aware of. Um, I don't know if it's a sprinter thing or if it's just us. Look at that, there's like almost no pad left. It's a good job we're doing this now. So now we've got to pull these two bolts out to get the carrier off. These are a 21 millimeter. And I'm gonna try and just give it a whack with the hammer because I don't feel like exerting myself. There's that. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna make some noise here. There we go. What happened? It was just seized on there a little bit. So now I'm gonna clean all this stuff up, get some of the old brake dust off, and um, start putting it back together. Now we have to uh, clamp or squeeze this caliper this way to retract the piston. This doesn't really require any special tools. You don't have to spin the piston while you're squeezing it or anything like that. You can just use a regular C-clamp as long as that it's big enough. Um, but note that this is just a plastic housing for the motor here, so uh, you don't want to go crazy with the clamping on it. Um, if you just go slowly, it'll only take a little bit of force. Uh, and the piston will move while you are squeezing it. And Mandy is going under the hood to monitor the fluid level in the reservoir to make sure that it doesn't overflow. And if it does overflow, she's gonna yell at me. But this didn't uh, push a ton of fluid on the other side yesterday, so we'll probably be okay. So I'm just rotating it a little bit at a time so that uh, it's not a ton of force on this plastic housing. I don't want to crush that or crack it or anything. And the piston will move slowly. If you 
if you try to clamp it really fast, it'll, uh, it'll take a lot more force because you've got to move all of that fluid through the lines. So this is fully retracted now. I felt it get much harder to turn. Um, so I'm just gonna back the clamp off. And that should give us enough room to install our new fatter pads and rotor. So I wanted to note one thing. This van has a, an electric parking brake because it has swivel seats. And this is appears to be part of like the um, cable actuated parking brake thing. But it really looks like it was making contact with the inside of the rotor there. It was a little bit more apparent on the other side than this side, but that seems like some sort of an issue and I don't know why it looks like that. I don't know if you guys can tell cause it's so contrasty, but it looks like there was some metal to metal contact there, right? But that would be the inside of the rotor, which really shouldn't be making contact with anything. Um, but this, this van had like a squealing noise that usually comes on after we've been driving for about an hour-ish um, if the brakes are off. But as soon as we touch the brakes, the squeal goes away. Um, so I don't know if that was a contributing factor, but I'm going to put some anti-seize on there and hopefully that will help to lubricate those mating surfaces that shouldn't really be mating. Um, I did that on the other side too and I'm going to use the included grease with the new pads to grease all the pads, the anti-rattle clips, and the face of the piston in the caliper, and um, start throwing all this stuff back together. So we're just gonna snug up this rotor retainer screw. You can put those in with anti-seize if you want. Um, kind of sucks when those get seized in there because then you got to drill them out but since it's a Torx it's pretty easy to center the drill uh, so it's not a huge deal it's just minor annoyance um, I just want to put a little bit more tight on there yeah that's good now I can lube up all of the new pads and assemble them into the caliber carrier and get that bolted on there this is the face of the pad that you want to grease up with the included uh, grease and they give you a little diagram on here it's generic but they show you where to apply the grease uh, you definitely don't want to grease the friction side of the pad that would not uh, would not bode well for stopping power And then this guy just clips on to here, like so. And now there's two different designs of these clips. They're mirror images, and I'll show you how you know which goes where. See that little tab right there? It's got like a bend in it so that as you push the pad in from the outside, that will help to guide it into this slot, like this. Actually, I think this goes in this way. But see, that helps you to kind of guide the pad into where it needs to go. So this little tab goes out, and then on this side, the tab will go out like so. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm just gonna use my 21 millimeter wrench on these. For real tight, I think. Just wanna make sure when you're putting this back over the carrier that you kind of guide that boot into where it wants to be so you don't get it all tore up and twisted. Make sure that your brake line is how it was and doesn't have a full twist in it because that's easy to do when you're moving it around a bunch. And that would not be good if it gets kinked it will lead to premature failure.
I'm washing the tire. Apparently it's covered in brake dust. What is this? The tire. What is that? A wheel. I'm washing the wheel because apparently it's covered in brake dust. And Rob told me to. So that he can check and see if the new brakes get dusty. Because they're not supposed to. Well, they are supposed to, but we're hoping that it's less. They're not supposed to. Nice and soapy. Now we've got to rinse it. The other side. Look at that technique. What? Just flipped it over with ease. One thing to note, this is the spot where I had issues. These struts were replaced, uh, what, last winter? Sure. You can watch our other video by clicking this thingy right here if you want to see when we installed these. These are Bilstein replacement struts, and they have this little tab right here. I don't know if you can see it because it's in shadow, but there's also one on this side. For whatever reason, I'm not really sure but it impedes removing this carrier bolt. Uh, so once I've got this disassembled, what I did on the other side was I just hit this with the grinder a little bit to just remove a, enough material so that I can remove this bolt. What I had to do to actually get it out was I had to pull the rotor out so that I could pull the carrier out as I loosened the bolt. But the issue that I had on the other side, which I'm anticipating having on this side, is that this rotor was extremely seized onto this hub with rust, about right in this region, all the way around. Uh, like I said, this van's got less than 40,000 miles on it, and it's two years old, so I don't know why it's like that, but maybe that's just the thing that they do. This will be fun. Watch how we get this thing off. So this is the same T30 Torx for removing the retainer screw, but there's nothing preventing this from rotating right now. So I just stick a screwdriver in there. Oh boy. Maybe it needs a little tap first. Sometimes that helps to loosen them up. The caliper bolts are the same 6mm Allen wrench. This one has the brake pad wear indicator. Alright, so the front has a wear indicator on the passenger side. I guess they're just diagonally opposed because on the other side it's in the rear. You need a E8 external torque socket to uh, remove the connection here and then you can oh I'm not even showing you guys what I'm doing so once you've got that removed then you can unplug this this plug is a little bit different design than the one on the rear so on the rear you're just gonna have to figure it out or watch a different video I don't know okay so that guy's unplugged and I just let this hang down because it makes it easier to move the caliper around so now this should be ready to come off. This guy is um, pretty seized on there. It's probably about as bad as the driver's one was. Hopefully it's not much worse. Um, but I'm just gonna time lapse it, I guess. It's, uh, this will be interesting. So I knew it was gonna be bad. I started off by applying a bunch of heat all around the rotor, you know, mostly focusing on the outside of the hub because I knew that's where it was seized and then I started beating it with the sledgehammer and eventually I got the rotor disc to separate from the hub and I couldn't get the hub to move at all so I just broke out broke out the cutoff wheel and I cut out a chunk so once I cut the window out of the rotor it started to move off when I was beating on it. Have you guys ever seen anything like that? I've never seen a brake rotor so seized on 
and I've been wrenching for a while. This one at least came off in fewer pieces, so that's a bonus, I guess, but uh, if you're attempting this job, I guess anticipate that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to anti-seize the entire everything, uh, so next time I do brakes on this, I don't have to deal with that, hopefully. Now I can take off the rest of the rotor. I mean, I guess it's custom two-piece rotors, because race car or whatever. There was just rust buildup. You can sort of see this lip right here. You just got to be very careful when you're cutting the rotor. Don't cut all the way through on these cuts. You can see I left just a little bit. And then you can break that piece with the chisel because you don't want to grind into your hub. Although it's better to grind into it than to have high spots on it. So now I'm just going to grind some clearance for this carrier bolt. And like I said, I'll knock down this little high spot where I accidentally hit it with the hammer. And then we can get on to cleaning up and reassembly. Now we throw on the new rotor. Now I'm just gonna grease up all the mating surfaces on the carrier, the, the uh, anti-rattle clips and the pads, and I'm gonna throw this up, but I'm gonna skip over that because you guys saw it on the rear. I've got my pad and carrier assembly with the retainer clips and a bunch of grease ready to go in. And we just slip it over the rotor and get the bolts lined up. Those are tight. I'm going to just squeeze this caliper down. The front ones are a dual piston caliper, so it's, uh, it's a little bit easier if you use an old pad to bridge the gap across the pistons, although if you really wanted to get spicy, you could use two separate clamps. And again, Mandy is monitoring to make sure we don't overflow the reservoir. So we've got to suction a little bit of fluid out of the reservoir. Can you see how full that is? So I'm just gonna suction a little bit out with this straw. Mm. I guess it just stayed in the hose. The wear indicator goes on the outer pad, but I think it's easier if it's not in the way while you're installing the caliper. And there's a little window in the caliper so you can install that after the caliper's in place, which should risk minimize the risk of damaging the sensor. So I don't know if you guys can see because it's pretty dark, but that guy just pops in right there. And that's it. And I've greased up the connector already. So we just gotta pull this guy over here and plug him in. And then we can secure the connector to the caliper with this bolt and secure the caliper to the carrier with the Allen head bolts. That one's tight. That one's tight. I install the caps. That's tight, those are tight, that's in, those are tight, that one's tight. Now we just have to install the wheel. Yeah. And once you're done the job, you've gotta come back into the instrument cluster and on the brake pad replacement screen that we showed you how to get to at the beginning, it will say fitting position reached. To exit fitting position, push OK. So you just push in the track pad. It will say caution exiting fitting position until it moves into the normal position. 
it will say fitting position exited to confirm push OK so I'll push in the trackpad again and it takes us back and we can just go back one more time and go to the regular screen. This video is a little bit longer than our usual ones. It's like almost a half an hour long, but I tried to put some useful information in and a lot of tech. Um, and I wanted to show some of the issues that I had in a little bit of detail. Um, so let me know if that helps you guys out at all or not. Um, leave a comment down below if you have any issues or if you tried it and were able to get the job done, that would be awesome. Uh, like this video and subscribe to our channel. We're about to be hitting the road for a very long road trip. This is why we wanted to get all of this maintenance stuff done. Um, but follow our upcoming videos to see where we're headed.